smell of nitro. Blown fuel hydros, and definitely the most awesome machines in all of motorsports. A 4,000 horsepower nitromethane burning Hemi engine and a lightweight hydroplane hull, capable of going from zero to 220 miles an hour in just five seconds. Hi, I'm Kenny Youngblood. This is Firebird International Raceway. concentrating on the tree and watching it when it's going to go green. Reach down, flip the clutch in gear, you idle to the idle buoy, and then you break the go to about a quarter throttle to break the boat over, and the clock starts counting three, two, one. And when I see it go two, about the time when you see it go two and you think about it, I go, I go to the floor with it. The boat is literally trying to blow itself on top of the water. And then when you get through, you start easing off the accelerator, hit the first parachute, and then grab your manual chute, and then turn it off. That's it. to the water. After each run, the boats are trailered back to the pit area where the engines are torn completely down, inspected, repaired, put back together, and then usually fired up before the next round of illuminations. We just put the motor in the boat. So we're hooking up all the fuel lines, up, oil lines, up, uh, tightening the motor down, getting everything lined up, and packing the parachutes, and we're getting ready to go to the water. Three guys that basically work on the motor, and then we have a man that works on the running hardware which is the prop and the prop shaft, the coupler, and all the, the critical items. And I like the driver to do that because those are critical items. And if something were to break, he is responsible.
driver's a little bit different than most people. <laughs> you know, whenever you know, the word gets out that you're looking for a driver, what I do is I, uh, I have a test that they take. The person that scores the lowest is definitely not the brightest, so he gets to drive. Kyle won. <laughs> All of us get along great. We uh, we all work work together, and uh, Fred and I, uh, we try to every time after the run we come in and I tell him what the boat did and, and how it acted and reacted to to the high speed or the leave or the shift or whatever, and then we come back and see what damage is done to the motor. So we really have a good working relationship, and everybody on the crew gets along great. And uh, every time we go to a race, we have a lot of fun. Oh, we just love the fast motors on the on the boat. <laughs> the, the, the noise, the noise, the noise, the noise, the noise, and the smell of nitro. It's great. <laughs> they go really fast. <laughs> alcohol hydroplane is an engine that's run on methanol for fuel. It's a restriction of the type of fuel that we can use. It's a supercharged engine and we use a hydroplane for the vessel unlike a flat bottom or a jet boat. Blown Crazy Top Alcohol Hydroplane, we've only been in the class for two years now. We've set two IHBA world records in that short amount of time. Um, we come out, we run a good clean program, we're safe in what we do, we have the capsules now. Um, and it's, it's a very promising sport, you know, you go out there and you watch these boats make a pass and they're on the wild side every time they go down the track. You're on the edge every time and it, and it makes it exciting. Well, a boat's quite a bit different than anything anybody's been in, especially a hydroplane, because when you take off out of the gate, first thing, there's so much torque of the motor and the boats are so lightweight, the fiberglass and the sponsors, everything just picks up on the side, carries it for a little bit, sets back down, about the time it sets back down, you shift, picks up again, about that time it's all over and you've got to start grabbing things to slow it down and shut you down. I have the same same thinking no matter who I run against. Every time I get up there, all I worry about is the flashing light, flashes, flashes, flashes. When it goes solid, I do the same motions. I close the lid, I get ready, the boat's still idling, and then when it goes out, I just slam it in gear. We idle up to the turning buoy, then I hit it and we go, and we go for a ride. are very interesting. In the open cockpit boats, um, especially, you really have to hang on because you're just sitting hanging onto the steering wheel and they throw you forward quite a bit. In the capsule boat, it's a little bit nicer now that when the chutes come out, we're strapped in, we're real secure in the boat and we don't have that problem getting thrown into the dash nearly as hard because we're strapped. First thing we do is we hit the parachute, then I drop down, I hit the fuel shut off and then the kill switch. That way I make sure everything's off and there's no mis mishaps. If, if Even for a second, some sticks, throttle, anything stays in gear, you're going to be on the beach and you're going to hurt yourself, the boat, or maybe someone else that might be there.
never know who will show up at the drag boat races. Actually, this weekend's Grand Marshal is none other than former NFL quarterback, top fuel drag racer, and drag boat fan Dan Pastorini. Dan, you've raced a lot of different kind of vehicles. How does drag boat racing compare to asphalt drag racing? Well, Kenny, years ago I used to run a, uh, a top fuel jet boat, and uh, we were able to come here and set the world record four times, as a matter of fact, here at uh, Firebird in, in Lake Maine. And I used to think that uh, drag boat racing was pretty exciting until I got into uh, a top fuel dragster. And then uh, this is the first time I've been back uh, on the scene as far as the drag boats are concerned and when I saw a couple of these top fuel boats come down the quarter mile, the liquid quarter mile, my job's real safe in my dragster. <laughs> that uh, that was a handling job and a half when I saw those guys do today. I, it's too, uh, too risky for me. I heard that. Of course the uh, inception of the capsules made it a lot safer out here. I got a friend of mine, uh, Gary McClendon, that uh, was one of the pioneers as far as the capsules are concerned and it has uh, saved a lot of lives in boat racing, no question about that. And uh, naturally, anytime you have a racing vehicle, whether it be boat cars or whatever, uh, safety's the main factor, and those, those have definitely made a big improvement in the sport. Have you ever thought about driving a top fuel hydro yourself? I've thought about it. That's as far as it's gonna go. <laughs> ones that had a totally enclosed capsule. This is the second one I've had. And, uh, you know, when uh, I've been in this thing, like I say, it's my 17th year. I've seen a lot of my friends have lost their lives. A lot of them, are, you know, marred for life, uh, can't walk, paralyzed, whatever. And uh, I saw the need for something like this, so I helped pioneer this deal. It seems to be working, and just like you uh, saw that crash a while ago, hey, he's all right. I'm going to shake hands with that guy this afternoon. Three or four years ago, I couldn't have done that. You know, I might be seeing him in the hospital at best. You know, if you have a capsule, your chances are, are much, much better. I mean, you know, let that, let that boat take the beating on the water and not your body. <laughs> Describe a fuel boat. Well, is any, I'm sure everybody, all the viewers at home, have seen is seen top fuel cars and funny cars out of the car drag races. It's the same exact engines, same exact power plants. Everything's exactly the same, except it's in a boat and it goes across the top of water. And when you put all that horsepower in a 500-pound fiberglass drag boat that's 20 feet long, it, it gets your attention real quick, and it's exciting as heck. Well, the capsule's done uh, not only just for fuel racing, it's done a whole bunch for all of drag boat racing. You know, as you can see behind me, you know, you sit in an enclosed cockpit with an F-16 fighter windshield on top of you, and it makes the sport extremely safe, you know. Uh, you can see crashes. We've had crashes this year. The guys get out and walk away, you know. You're not seeing no fatalities, no, no major injuries whatsoever. And, uh, you know, when you can have a sport like that, where nobody's getting hurt, that's just spectacular. I was racing Ralph Padilla in the first round today. Ralph crashed. Yeah, I didn't see that happen at all. I, we, we ran pretty good that first round. I think we ran a 210 for a 510 lap time. So <clears throat> this thing moved down the racetrack real quick. I didn't get to say anything, but uh, I haven't seen any video since then. And uh, so people say that, that, that he's up, he's moving, he's walking, everything's fine, he's perfect. And that just goes to show you the, the safeness when you're inside the safety capsule. You know, it takes a lot of experience, it takes a lot of years behind it. It takes some really quick reflexes. It, it takes a heck of a driver to drive one of these field boats, no matter what anybody's doing. Number 603, going crazy. They said he's had some hammer problems or something. They wanted to make it sing. It goes to sing. Okay, hold on, let me see. Dino, are you ready? <laughs>
in the back. Because I basically I've never been. This is the first time I've ever been. Uh, so I love the boat races, but I want uh, the spirit of America to win. Uh, the of America. Uh, yeah. uh, I want to jump over and start swimming. What would they do to me if I? I'm hot. Yeah. Uh, smoking and stroking. Uh, You're from Texas. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you think they'd arrest me if I started swimming across the lake? <laughs> That's what's good about here. There's good looking women in fast boats. Slow down. <laughs> I don't know what you could really have anybody compare it to that, that, that they could even relate to how fast and how quick this happens. It, uh, it to cover a quarter mile on water in a little over five seconds at 200 miles an hour, uh, it's hard to tell anybody, even people that have driven cars, how fast you're running because somebody in a car would know, uh, especially if it's been in drag racing what it takes to run in the fives. So when it leaves the line and you come out the other end, the water's still in the air from when you hit it, so uh, uh, that's probably something you're not going to see out on your local lake. thing you got to watch for out here is to make sure all the safety equipments and gear all our boats are ready to run no one catches any cables make sure the boats aren't sinking make sure the driver's got his equipment on and ready to go and after that the rest is up to the guy at the lights on the, on the beach over there once the beach is ready to go i tell him to fire him up and we're off and running to the races okay they'll be ready here in just a minute they're getting you know getting turned around so they're facing down course Five one six. Excuse me. Well, I'm gonna give you your lunch. I ain't swimming, sucker. Now you're lucky. I didn't miss this. <laughs> been out here a long time. <laughs> it ain't my fault you've been out here. I just this is the case for me to be here long. Enjoy. Oh, that will. This is it, Robinson Crusoe's Island. You gotta be. Here. You don't depend on these boats. You might not eat for the day. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, the speed, the excitement, it's just, it's a wild show, and I think that's why everybody's here. It's a great way to spend a weekend. How's Mr. Braxman doing? Excellent, how are you? Oh, want to see this run this weekend, you know that. Yeah, I hope so. Hope hell, you'll do it. <laughs> I started this sport seven years ago. Good friend of mine at the time, Cecil Florence, raced the Coors Light Silver Bullet drag boat. 
I watched him and watched him. I used to come out to the races, and he kept telling me, you got to try this someday. you got to try this someday. Once I got hooked, it was all over with. It was an experience like I never believed before. I think I had driven other boats before, and, and it, they were fast and exciting and all that. And I got in the fuel boat, and the first thing you do is you get you hold on to that holding rope down there at the starting line, and you start the thing up, and the thing scares you to death. You hear that 4,000 horsepower behind you, and I thought, what in the heck are we doing here? I left that starting line and came up, made my approach, and put my foot down on that throttle and thought, wah, this thing's bad. That thing was at half track, and I still thought, thought I was still at the starting line. That, 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 those boats are fast. You know, and then throughout the years, they've gotten faster and faster, and it, it's a real thrill now to go down there, like a quarter mile, a little under five seconds at times, 227 miles an hour, it's a, it's a thrill. Menthol. Sometimes we'll add a igniter to help it fire. Two mags, two spark plugs per cylinder, two dials per cylinder, billet heads. And it takes a lot of work to build one of those engines. You got very sophisticated engines. Okay, it's all special cans, special pistons, rods, bearings. Everything is built specially for that engine. If you don't do it that way, it won't last and won't run. The power comes out of the engine comes through the transmission, goes into the Casail V-Drive. This transmits the power from the engine out through the propeller shaft, through the bottom of the boat. And the propeller being at the other end of the boat, all that horsepower ends up on this little bitty propeller right here. so many variables involved in drag belt racing. Uh, the weather changes, uh, propeller changes, gear changes. Uh, you got the driver variable, which is always uh, a problem, but uh, there's so many variables involved in drag belt racing. It takes a total combination of all those variables to put together a winning, a winning team. A tremendous amount of hard work. Uh, we have worked day and night. When we're not racing, we're home tuning this boat up. I mean, every night after work, we spend working on this boat, the whole team. I don't have a crew chief. We work so well together that I didn't want to say any one person was a crew chief because I didn't want anybody anybody's feelings getting hurt. We work so well as a team that uh, it wasn't necessary to delegate that particular 
duty to any one person. Everybody has a job, and if anybody has a problem with their job, we collectively get together and solve the problems as they come up. This has been a team job since we started, and uh, teamwork is what has got us here today. can't even comprehend something running that fast that quick but uh, you really have to see it to uh, and get the thrill we stand on the beach and feel it pounding on your chest when it comes by to, to know really how much horsepower is putting out 